Hey guys, what's up? It's Moz here and welcome back to another video. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you guys how to edit videos using Sony Vegas Pro. I know this program can look pretty scary when you first open it up, so I thought I would make a video teaching you guys how to use it, as I've seen it get requested a ton of times in the past week. Anyways, it would be super awesome if you guys could drop a like and maybe even subscribe if you end up enjoying this video, as it will let me know that I should upload more videos like these. Keep in mind that this is just going to be a tutorial for beginners, so don't expect me to show you guys how to add lightsabers and explosions into your videos, but if you guys are interested in those kind of things, then I'm sure you could find those somewhere else on YouTube, but without further ado, let's get on with the video. So as I said before, the first look of this program can be really confusing and scary, but honestly it's super simplistic once you realize what everything does. The first thing that we want to do is go ahead and import some video files, and to do that all you have to do is just go up to file right here, click on import, and then click on media. And from here all you have to do is just go ahead and browse for the file that you actually want to add into your like video. So for starters I guess we can just use the channel intro that you guys saw in the beginning of this video, so I'm just going to quickly look for that, actually it's right here already. And once you find it all you have to do is just click on open. So once you actually open up the clip, you're going to see it laying in the project media tab right here. There's a chance that you might be in one of these tabs, so all you have to do is just click on the project media tab and you'll see it right here in the project. Now if I want to actually edit this clip, all I have to do is just go ahead and drag and drop it into the timeline. And the timeline is essentially where you'll edit the clips that are stored in the project media tab. And uh, right here I'm just going to go ahead and click on no so that the project settings don't match the video settings. And uh, we'll get more into that later on in the video. But from here what you want to do is just go ahead and drag your clip all the way to the beginning of your timeline and you should be good to go from there. So this whole like bottom area like where the two little layers are right here and like where your file is, this is essentially called your timeline. And the timeline is essentially where you're going to edit the clips that are stored in the project media tab. And as you can see right now there are two different layers, the video layer and then the audio layer. The video layer is the top one and the audio layer is the bottom one. And uh, let's say that we want to add more tracks and all we'd have to do is just go ahead and right click right here and then just click on insert video track. And in doing so you'd actually be able to overlay another video on top and this would come in handy if you wanted to add a little animation on top of your video or maybe even some text. I know that layers can be kind of confusing and they were pretty confusing for me when I was learning Photoshop and programs like that. But the way that I like to think about layers is that it's kind of like a stack of paper and the layer or a piece of paper that's going to be on the bottom of the whole entire stack is going to be the one that's going to be behind everything else whereas the layer that's all the way on the top is going to cover everything else. Um, I think that makes sense but I'm not too sure so if it doesn't make sense just let me know in the comment section below and I'll try to elaborate for you guys. Also whenever you do import a clip what you want to do is just go and click on the clip, right click it, go to switches and then click on disable resample. And by doing such a simple thing, it's going to increase the quality of your videos by a huge amount. Alright guys, so as you can see, the first thing that you really do see is your preview screen, which is right up here in the right corner. There's a chance that yours might be really blurry or something like that, so what you want to do to change it to make it have good resolution is go up here where it says best full. Yours might say something like draft auto or one of these. But basically you want to click where the text is, go to best, and then change it to full. And by doing that, you'll be able to get the best resolution in your preview screen. Keep in mind that if you have a lower end PC, this might be a very laggy software for you and you might want to look into something else. There's also a chance that in the preview screen right here, your clips might look a little laggy, but trust me, that's fine because once you actually render your clips, it'll look way smoother than before. And uh, I guess we could start actually editing your clip. So if you actually scroll upwards with your scroll wheel on your mouse, you'll actually be able to zoom into your clip and it's basically the entire clip. It's not a longer version of the clip. It's still six seconds long, but basically you can see more of the clip in case you want to get Get more like precise with your cuts and I guess the first thing that I'm just gonna go ahead and teach you guys is basically fading your videos so since mine already have a fade I'm just gonna go ahead and talk about splits first and essentially if you want to split a video all you have to do is just right click it and then click on split and as you can see now the video is split but it still continues right as where the other one left off at but it has a blank space in the middle so I want to get rid of the first part and now I just have the part that I wanted and I'm also gonna split the bottom end because I don't want that either so if you want to just split it all at once, all you have to do is just right click it and click trim end and it will trim it from where your little line is right here. And to say that do accidentally mess something up, all you have to do to reset it is click on the control button on the bottom left of your keyboard, then click on Z. And you want to do that together and then you'll get whatever you messed up on and it's basically an undo feature. But since I purposely did that, I'm just going to quickly trim that again. And now I'm going to teach you guys how to fade your videos. So usually most people fade videos when you're uh, beginning a clip or ending a clip. So basically to fade your video, all you have to do is just go to the top left of a clip and then kind of just bring it in. And as you can see, the clip is kind of fading. So if I was to play the video right now, you can see that it's going to fade in the beginning. So I'm going to stop talking for a second to show you guys that. 
So as you guys could see, the clip was fading in in the beginning, and if we want to make it fade out, all I have to do is just drag this in. And as you can see, it does look too much right now, but that's just because I only have a six second clip to work with. Say we had like a minute long gameplay or something, then you wouldn't have to fade it in as much, you just have to probably fade it in like this much, and you'd probably be good to go. Another cool thing about fades is that you can actually add them to your audio. So say you want your audio to fade out with your video and not have it be loud the whole time, then it's gonna slowly come in right here, and it's gonna increase, increase, then it's gonna be the normal volume, and it's gonna start decreasing as the video is ending. Another tip that's pretty handy is splitting your audio and video tracks. And uh, when you first import a clip, you'll notice that the audio and video from the same clip is kind of glued together. And as you can see, when I'm moving my clip around, both the audio and video layers are coming together. But if you want to separate them, all you have to do is just right click on any of them that are kind of glued together, go to group, and then just go ahead and click on clear. And once you do that, you'll actually be able to split them. And it will probably be weird, but it actually comes in handy in different cases. And it just depends on what you're working on. And uh, one thing that I really like to do when I'm first starting up my projects is basically find a spot that I'm kind of happy with in the beginning and right away just go ahead and go to file save as go to my desktop and just save it as whatever I want so I'm just gonna quickly save it I named it test for YouTube and it's gonna be a .veg file which is a Vegas Pro project file from there just go ahead and click on save wherever you want to save it and in case Vegas does crash while you're actually editing your video you're not gonna lose everything and you'll actually have a good amount of stuff still saved over something I recommend doing is basically saving it after every couple of changes so that if you do actually end up losing some data you're not gonna lose everything Thing and you'll basically have most of the stuff you had previously and uh, so far I've basically shown you guys the basics of how to use Sony Vegas and uh, what I've literally shown you guys in the last few minutes is really the bread and butter for how content creators make their content with this software and uh, so now I'm just gonna quickly drag this stuff all the way back to where it was and uh, we're just gonna quickly practice the steps that we just learned so you don't have to worry about doing all this stuff again with me but I'm basically just gonna drag in some gameplay and apply some of the new things that I just taught you guys so something cool is that you don't always have to go to file and then import and then media you can actually just go to your file explorer and look for the recording that you want to use and once you do find the file that you want to use all you have to do is just click on it and then drag it into your timeline and from there just drag it all the way right next to your clip and let go of it from there you can close out of your file explorer and you will see your clip right there so as i said previously first thing that we always want to do is right click on the clip go to switches and then go ahead and disable the resample and another thing i just taught you guys is you can basically split the audio and video tracks so what i'm going to do right click group and clear and now I'm not gonna have any of the audio from that video because I personally don't want it I like to actually add music to my videos so once I did that now I just only have the video left another thing that we can do is go ahead and cut some of the video up so I'm just gonna make it go to about two minutes and then trim the end of it from there we can actually add a fade in and then we can also add a fade out and to just basically show you guys the quick fade out I'm just gonna play it from here and stop talking so you guys can see the fade out And as you guys can see, the video is fading out in my previous screen, and now the video just ended. So now I'm going to quickly show you guys an example of how layers might work, and whenever you want to add a picture or something that's a still or moving object, you'd want to right click and then create a new video track. So I already have one created, as you can see we already made one in a previous step. But let's say that this track wasn't here, so I'm just going to quickly delete it. And if you want to create a new one, all you have to do is just find some blank space, right click on it, insert video track, and then just make sure that the video track is on top of your normal layers. And say for example it is and it's right down here, all you have to do is just drag it up. And there you go, now you have a video track on top of your current layer. And there is a difference between video tracks and audio tracks. And basically you'll be able to tell if it's an audio track if it has this little like output bar. But from here, I'm just going to quickly go ahead and look for like a little logo or something like that. So this like little layer step can basically be pretty useful if you have something like a watermark or anything along those lines and you'd like to place it on your video. So I'm just going to quickly look for my logo. All right, guys, so I found a really old logo of mine, but I'm just going to go ahead and drag it into the video anyway. And what I'm going to do is just drag it to like right here and then drag it all the way to the end of the video and right before it starts fading out. And as you can see, the logo is actually covering the entire screen. So what you want to do is click on this little crop button right here if it does do that for you. And from here, you can basically make this window bigger but uh, I'm gonna basically make it just that big so I can still see my preview screen and from here all you have to do is just drag out and you'll see that your logo is starting to get smaller and to make sure that you don't like drag out incorrectly what you want to do is hold shift while you're dragging and then just drag out so what you want to do is uncheck the lock aspect ratio button typing in 1920 and 1080 and this basically means 1080p and from there you can basically just start dragging out by holding shift and from here, what you want to do is just go ahead and lock the aspect ratio again so it can't change numbers. And from there, you can just start zooming out again and basically place the logo wherever you want. So as you can see, my logo is being placed right there. I'm just going to go ahead and place it right here, actually, just for fun. And from there, you can just click on the X. Say you want to change it again later, all you have to do is just click on the crop button one more time, zoom out, and you can make some changes if you want to. 
but I'm actually content with where it is right now. Um, one last thing that I want to do is just go ahead and add some music. So I'm just going to look for some music. Keep in mind that YouTube doesn't allow you to use actual music like music by Drake or Bryson Tiller or an actual artist. So you'd probably want to look for some copyright free music from like no copyright sounds or someone like that. So I'm just going to quickly go ahead and look for, I don't know, I'll just use this. I haven't heard it in a really long time. So I'm just going to drag it in and make sure that you add it to an audio track. But uh, here's something that we can basically use our skills for. We can go ahead and cut the end of the the track because we don't need any of that. We can also go ahead and create a new audio track so that it doesn't mix in with my intro layer that we had right here. And I'm just going to drag the intro one back up. So that part is just cut together with the intro and then the intro music right here. So that's the intro clip, that's the intro music, as you guys can see one more time. And this is just some music that I just added. You can also change the audio levels, which is also known as something called gain, by just going to the top and dragging it down. And then as you can see, the sound is going down and down and almost to the point where you can't hear anything at all. What I like to do is just drag this down about to, let's say, 26. I usually drag this about 10. And let's say I want to add a fade to the song, so I'm just gonna fade it from the beginning like I taught you guys how to do with the video. So as you guys could see, the audio is slowly fading in and it's gonna start getting louder and louder. And once it actually passes the fade part, then it's just gonna be the normal volume. And I highly recommend not having your audio louder than your actual commentary or anything like that because that's going to be pretty annoying for your viewers. So I'm just going to quickly drag this back down and make it match where my logo ends. And then that's when the fade starts for the Counter-Strike video right here. As you can see, it's slowly starting to fade out to black. So once you're done with actually making your video, what you would want to do is go up here to the little gear button right here. And this is also known as your project settings. And from here, you can change the quality of your video. So let's say that I want to have my video be, um, I guess we could go ahead and do 1080p with 30 FPS. So all you have to do is just click on that one. But you really don't need to click on anything. All you have to do is just change the settings yourself. So what I like to do is up always upload my videos in 1080p. If you want to do your videos in 720p, all you have to do is just change this to 1280 and then change the second number to 720. And now you're going to be uploading in 720p. But as I said before, I like to upload in 1080p. It does take longer to render your videos but i feel like the quality is well worth it so i'm just going to change those numbers back and right here you can basically change the fps of your video so if you want to do 30 fps you want to do 29.97 ntsc if you want to do 60 fps then you want to do 59.94 double ntsc i always upload in 60 fps so i'm going to keep that there you can basically keep everything else the same i like to make my deinterlace method none and uh, always make it resample mode disable resample as i did say before and i'm usually fine with just unchecking this box and then these are going to be my audio settings and here's my ruler my summary and audio CD that you really don't mess with anything else besides the video settings and uh, if you were to just click on this button right here then you wouldn't ever have to get that appear that little box that says do you want to click yes or no in the beginning when you first drag in a clip and it'll always just use these settings so I recommend just go ahead and click on this and just click on apply and then okay and uh, now once you're done with your video say you want to add some col color correction to your like maybe gameplay or something like that all you have to do is just make sure you clicked on your video track for your gameplay click on video FX scroll down to color curves and then drag the default one onto your video video and once you're done with dragging it you're gonna get this new little dialog box so from here you can just drag this thing up and then a bit to the right and as you can see the preview is changing so you guys should probably look at this while I'm doing this then you guys can go back a couple of seconds and actually do it with me and then you can drag this down and a bit more to the left and as you can see the colors have changed so if I was to go to somewhere that's a bit more brighter in the map kind of like this area you guys can see that it's changed a bit this map's kind of not a good map to show you guys color correction because it is brown and gray but you would be able to see a significant difference in any other thing and if you want to actually see the difference right away all you have to do is click on this button right here as you can see this side's a bit more gray than this side was and this is the new brighter side but once you're done previewing it all you have to do is just unclick on that and uh, once you got your video done you can just go ahead and go to file render as and you can go ahead and start the render process but remember always save your video first so you can either click Control s or file save after you've already done a save as prior to that. From there, all you have to do is go to file render as. And from here, you can name it whatever you want. I'm gonna keep it test for YouTube. And from here, you would want to go ahead and pick what kind of render settings you want to use for your project. What I like to do is go and scroll down until I find Sony AVC slash MVC. Click on the little arrow next to that and look for internet 1920 by 1080 30p. Click on customize template. And then from here, I'm just, you guys should stay on this page, but I'm gonna quickly actually find my custom template so you guys can copy the settings that I have. So go ahead and copy these settings into the one that you have open right now and once you got all the settings copied down what i want you guys to do is name it 
something else, kind of like my YouTube rendering settings, and click on the save button. Once you click on the save button, go ahead and click on the little star right next to that thing, and then click on show favorites only, and then that's the only one that's ever going to show up, and then you, you'll actually just be able to click on that, and you should be good to go whenever you click on render. Change your uh, render destination to wherever you want. I don't want it to be my folder in my documents. I'm actually going to change it to my desktop. So to do that, all you have to do is just click on browse, and then just go to your desktop or wherever you want to save it and then just click on save and also if this little render loop option shows up i didn't actually teach you guys what re render loops are but just go ahead and uncheck that always uncheck it otherwise your video is not going to render properly and from there you can just go ahead and click on render and your video should be good to go after the time is up so obviously longer video is going to take a longer amount of time to render shorter videos will take a shorter amount of time i hope you guys enjoyed the video this did take me quite a long time to actually make and edit so i hope you guys really did enjoy be sure to drop a like if i helped you guys out in any way and please be sure to share this video with your friends i know sony Vegas is a hard program to learn when you're first using it so it would be great if we could actually spread this video around and help other people learn sony vegas it's a really awesome program it's great for beginners and even experts to end off the video i hope you guys enjoyed be sure to hit that like button share this video with your friends and go ahead and hit that subscribe button if you aren't already because i am on my way to 21,000 subscribers and all help is appreciated drop a comment below if you do need any help with any of these things and i'll do my best to help you guys out but other than that i'll see you guys in my next video peace